in anticipation of the new NVIDIA 3000 series GPUs coming out, I'm gonna take advantage of that and do a lot of much needed maintenance on my case labs built. I've had a little problem with the coolant. It's changing a different color. Um, I had NVLink 22080s in there. So I'm gonna go down to one card and I'll also show you guys some of the progress. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Thank you for joining me for another video. Remember to subscribe if you like my content, smash that like button, leave a comment below. Are you planning your system already for the new NVIDIA 3000 series? So the new NVIDIA 3000 series, they're supposed to be announced next month. We're getting really, really close. Very excited. It's been a little while since we've had a, a new GPU. I mean, the 2080 Ti has still been the top dog and then the 2080 Super. So we've had some nice high-end GPUs, but it's gonna be nice to have something new. Who knows what it's gonna bring? Maybe better performance advantages, maybe new cooler designs. So in anticipation of these being released, I have to do some maintenance work on my Case Labs case. Um, right now I have a 9900K with a, a Formula motherboard in there. I do have a 10900K in a separate system, but the difference wasn't enough for me to move it into the specific one, so I may leave that one in there for now. Right now, this is a dual loop system. I have a separate loop for the CPU, one for the GPU. Thankfully, that makes maintenance considerably easier. I don't even have to touch the CPU. I can just drain the GPU. Um, it used to be green. It used to be a really nice shade of green, and then, of course, blue for the CPU. But recently, I kind of left the system on longer, and I was running the pump at lower RPMs. I don't know what happened or if there's some type of reaction, but the coolant, and this originally was the Corsair, the, the green coolant that they have, which I think is similar to the Mayhem's. It did start to change color and become a little more brown. Um, I don't know why it took so long for it to do that, but then because of that, wasn't looking too good. So I definitely have to drain the system. What I'm gonna do is completely drain all the fluid out, taking out the GPU block, uh, cleaning it out. Um, I'm also gonna just flush it out with distilled water to make sure that I get, because I have a big 560 millimeter radiator on the bottom, a 360 millimeter radiator in the front. These are both hardware labs. Um, I really wanna make sure I get all that old cooling out of there. I'm gonna flush them out really good. And when I install the GPU back again, instead of doing NVLink, which is basically like SLI. Um, I didn't really take advantage of having two GPUs there as much as I, I thought. A lot of games don't really support it as much. I'm doing ultra wide. The 12080 is more than enough. Um, in DaVinci Resolve, if you're doing some video editing, the second GPU does come in handy a little bit, but it's not a tremendous difference as it's already a pretty powerful system. So I just plan to take out that second GPU. For now, I'm going to leave in that 2080, but when the new 3000 series comes out, I'm going to get rid of that 2080 and upgrade to whatever the newest stuff is and then my system at least all the coolant everything will be nice and ready i'll just leave it ready for the gpu to be switched out basically then the primary thing that i have to think about when i had sli it fills in the case nicely if you have just one gpu in there and the gpu is horizontal it doesn't fill in the case quite as nicely. You have a lot of empty room. In general, these big cases were meant to do SLI in or NVLink in the case of the newer um, RTX graphics cards. So what I may end up doing is, like I've had it before in the system, is just doing a vertical GPU. Now, I kind of didn't want to do a vertical GPU too much just because it really does block a lot of access to your motherboard. It's a lot harder if you have to take a, a cable out or even an NVMe drive if it's on the bottom. So it definitely restricts it. So when you put that in, you got to make sure you don't really need too much access unless of course nvidia announces something with nvlink some type of update where it works even better um, i'm kind of holding my breath for that one because it's been a long time since it's supposed to be working already and this is actually good because i'm taking time to clean the system out there's always a lot of dust buildup that happens in these big systems um, you know clean out the blocks really flush it out like i mentioned now i can start to think of the design that i want a little bit and we have to see what's going to be available for the 3000 series in terms of water cooling um, from some leak specs that i saw it looks like maybe the air cooled block design is a little bit different than we're used to so that may also mean slightly different gpu blocks but for now i'll sort of design everything around this msi c Hawk EK card, which is really a gorgeous card. Uh, build quality feels incredible on it. It's given, I've had two of them in here, gave me no issues at all. They're very large cards, which in a way it's good 
because it helps to fill out a big case like this even better. But keep in mind, they may not fit in a lot of smaller cases, but they fit in here just fine. Vertically, they look really cool as well. There's no RGB cable that has to go to your motherboard for the RGB to work. Everything is powered by the graphics card power already. So that's definitely a big plus. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this little update. You see some of this big water-cooled maintenance that sometimes we have to do. It's a little more of a hassle than doing just an air-cooled computer. But at the end, I think the aesthetics and the performance are definitely worth it. So stay tuned for whenever the 3000 series comes out. I'm going to do an update in this case, and we're going to see how it looks as well. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video.